Good job. And Blue Bomber's block is knocked off. His block is knocked off. Here's a toy that was popular when I was a kid. It's called Rock'em Sock'em Robots, and it's two little plastic robots that fight each other until one of them knocks the other one's block off. And because I have a problem of overcomplicating and overengineering everything that I do, I decided to build a life-size version of Rock'em Sock'em Robots. If you're new to bite-size engineering, I make impractical projects like this to get people excited about engineering and unleashing their inner maker. This is kind of a bigger project than I wanna do in one video. So in this video, I'm just gonna focus on building and prototyping the arm mechanism that kind of punches forward. I use these pneumatic cylinders in my over-engineered water bottle rocket, as well as my Boba Fett Sarlacc Pit potty training toilet video. And they were so much fun to use. If you haven't seen those videos, definitely go check them out because they are worth your time. These pneumatic cylinders come in different bore sizes. So that's the diameter of the actual piston inside that moves back and forth. And then you can get different stroke lengths. I want these robots to be fairly strong, but I think some of the bigger ones that you can buy are gonna be too strong. I don't want it to destroy itself and rip itself apart. So I think I'm gonna go with a 16 millimeter bore with a 100 millimeter stroke length. I'm going to start with this piece and kind of work from there. I don't know about you, but I have a really hard time visualizing mechanical linkages. I really can't wrap my head around it unless I sort of build out a prototype or model it in the computer. It turns out that it's actually not that hard to do what I'm trying to do. It's called a four bar linkage, which is like the most common type of linkage there is. And it basically is like this. You kind of have a grounded linkage that has two joints. And then from that grounded linkage, you have two parallel links that looks like this. And from there you add that fourth link to make a parallelogram. So these two links will always stay parallel as well as these two links. You can kind of move this bottom link in this arc shape and it's kind of the same motion that I'm after for that forward punching motion. I think I'm going to make these out of some sort of metal, probably aluminum to keep it lightweight. Obviously these aluminum links won't move on their own so I need to add that pneumatic cylinder. So I'm going to attach it between these two joints here. And when I extend and retract that pneumatic cylinder, it'll give me that motion that I'm after. To help explain this a little bit more clearly, I'm gonna use a tool called Motion Gen. I just found out about this really cool tool from the channel JBV Creative. If you haven't checked out his channel, it is awesome. So let's head into the neighborhood of Make Believe and let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna draw that first link and then ground it so that it doesn't move in my simulation. From there, I can draw two more links that are parallel to one another and then attach it with that fourth link. Then from there, I can add the pneumatic cylinder to give me that motion that I'm after. Hopefully this makes a little more sense what I'm trying to do. I could probably sit here for hours cutting out pieces of paper and trying to make this work, but a tool like this takes out all of the guesswork and is super valuable. I'm gonna take what I've learned from this and now I need to make a prototype. To help me build this prototype, I'm gonna be using this thing. This was sent to me by Xtool and it is the P2 55 watt CO2 laser cutter. It is packed full of some really cool features and abilities that I can't wait to show you in some upcoming videos. But in this project, I'm gonna be using it to cut out some cardboard so that I can prototype the moving arm linkages. For a maker like me, this is the main reason to have a CO2 laser cutter. It's perfect for making quick prototypes to make sure that you have the right dimensions before moving on to more expensive and more time consuming materials and processes. Xtool is running an annual promotion and you can get a huge discount on this machine. So if you're in the market for a CO2 laser cutter, I would recommend checking out the Xtool P2 because it has a whole list of features that I don't see on any other machines that are in this price range. I'm really glad that I made this prototype because I had to make a few adjustments. I didn't account for the brackets that need to hold the pieces together. So I'm actually going to need to make the linkages a little bit shorter, but I got all of that sorted out with this prototype and now I can move on. These pneumatic cylinders will run off of my air compressor. And in order to control the opening and closing of the pneumatic cylinder, I need to use a solenoid valve like this. So I need to have one cylinder and one solenoid for the right arm, one pair for the left arm, and then one pair for the head that pops up anytime there's a knockout. And then of course I need to multiply that by two because there are gonna be two fighting robots. So I went ahead and I ordered a bunch of these parts, including some tubing, whoops, that fell over, including the tubing that will connect everything together. This is going to be quite an ordeal hooking this all up. But honestly, I can't wait to get all this stuff together because it's going to be noisy and chaotic and really awesome. I think my current plan for building the linkages in this project is using aluminum profile like this. I used this to build my CO2 laser cutter and I think it's gonna be perfect for this job. So I went ahead and I just ordered a whole bunch of it. 
I hate talking about this, but now is a good time to ask for your support on Patreon. These projects cost a lot of money, and I have wonderful sponsors like DigiKey who help pay my bills and even provide a bunch of electronic components, but there are a lot of materials and components like this that come out of my own budget, and that's where Patreon comes in. If you want to support bigger and more expensive projects like this, visit patreon.com slash bitesizeengineering. You'll get access to the Discord community along with a bunch of other rewards, so go check that out. Now let's open up this aluminum and have a look. Oh my gosh, this is like triple packed. There's like three or four layers of plastic here. Oh my gosh. Gosh, that was an ordeal. Yeah, that looks awesome. This is gonna look super cool. Prototyping this project was super important because I didn't want to get the length of those linkages wrong and have to like recut them out of the aluminum several times. So building a prototype in this circumstance was definitely the right way to go. I'm messing around with these pieces of aluminum that I cut out and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get these to pivot. I thought about drilling a hole through the aluminum extrusion and just passing a bolt through there and making a really crude joint, but I feel like that would be a lot of friction and it also just kind of looks ugly. And then I remembered that I have these pillow block bearings that I used on my CO2 laser cutter build. And I think these are gonna work a lot better because first of all, they're bearing, so that motion is going to be a lot smoother. And then also it's just gonna look cleaner. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use these pillow block bearings, but I need to design and make a little bracket that connects these aluminum pieces to the pillow block. For parts like this, I really like prototyping on the 3D printer. So I'm going to go to my Bamboo X1 Carbon and I'm currently printing a prototype of these little brackets right now. While those parts are printing, I'm gonna start on the shoulder piece. I think my plan for the shoulder piece is to make it a little bit more beefy. So I'm gonna use this 2040 aluminum extrusion. I ordered some more black anodized version, but it hasn't come yet. So in the meantime, I'm gonna use this unanodized version. So I'm going to first attach two of these pillow block bearings. And according to my kinematic model, I need to space them 80 millimeters apart. Here's one of the mounting brackets. I'm gonna load it up with some hardware and then slide it onto the aluminum extrusion. The only downside to this design is that these move independently, so I need to make sure that they line up perfectly. So to do that, I'm just gonna use a ruler and make sure that they're all sticking out the exact amount. This might be a little hard to tell, but these bolts are just a little bit too long and the next size down is too short to grab onto that little T-nut. So I think the remedy is going to be inserting a little washer on top here to take up that little extra space so that it puts it at the right length. I'm ready to start figuring out how to attach this pneumatic cylinder. I've gone back and forth on where I want to place this. Ideally, it would be placed uh, on the same plane as these two arm pieces, uh, just for kind of simplicity's sake. But I've tried to prototype a couple of ways of doing that, and it just seems to bind up and sort of get in the way. So I think I'm going to have to put this pneumatic cylinder on the inside of the robot, which is fine, but it's just not going to look how I imagined it, but I think it's going to work just as well. To get these mechanics to work, I have to make sure that one side of my cylinder 
is rotating around the same joint as my linkage. The other side is not so critical. It can still push on that arm and make it swing back and forth, but the back side here needs to use the same joint. I'm using M8 hardware, so that means I need an eight millimeter hole in the back of this cylinder. Fortunately, these have a little hole on the back, but it's only six millimeters. My initial plan was to drill that hole out to eight millimeters, but I'm realizing that my bolts are just not long enough. And so instead, I'm actually gonna drill it undersize and tap it with an M8 thread so that I can just use that same M8 bolt to fasten this on there. Before I connect this to an air compressor, I need to assemble the solenoid valve that I showed earlier. Once that's assembled, I can connect the cylinder to the solenoid valve and then the solenoid valve to the air compressor. The solenoid valve is triggered using 12 volts, so I'm just gonna use my benchtop power supply for now and a little momentary button. Let's take a closer look at this solenoid valve. It's got a whole bunch of ports, five in fact, and at first glance that might seem like a little confusing or overwhelming, but it's actually not that bad. So you've got one intake port and then two output ports. When the solenoid is open, the air flows from the intake to port A, from port A, the air flows into the front of the solenoid, which retracts the piston, retracting the arm. Then when the solenoid is closed, the air flows from the intake to port B. When the air flows from port B, it goes into the back of the cylinder, pushing the piston out, extending the arm. Every time you cycle the pneumatic cylinder, there's no way to save the air that was inside the cylinder, so there are two little vent ports that are on here as well. As I'm putting this together, it occurs to me that if you're more familiar with electronics, this solenoid valve is kind of like a single pole double throw switch. It has one airline that it's controlling and it can move that airline in one of two places. I think I'm ready to attach the air compressor, but I do not feel safe around this thing. There's no way I'm gonna be holding this in my hands on my first test. So I think I should fasten it to my workbench just to be safe. I'm not exactly sure the best way to do this. I've got, I've got a squeeze clamp. Maybe I can use that. Hold on a second, I'll be right back. Okay, so maybe if I do like this, will that be strong enough? Hey, I think that's gonna work. What do you think? All right, let's give it a go. I'm gonna turn the air compressor on and I'm gonna lower the air pressure down to like 25 PSI because there's, I don't, want, I don't want this thing to tear itself apart. I don't wanna get hurt. So I'm gonna start really low and kind of ramp up to see where, where I can get to. There we go. So I've dialed that down to like 25 PSI. I'm not sure if I have the tubes reversed or not, but what should happen is that the uh, arm should go to the reverse position and if I've got them switched it'll go forward and then when I activate the solenoid it will go to the other position so let's see what happens when I plug this in I'll stand back a little bit okay good so it went to the reverse position and now when I connect the wire of the solenoid it should go forward wait what's going on here hold on Something's not right. I have something pinched or something. I don't know what's going on. I think I'm gonna have to troubleshoot this. I'm not sure what's going on, but give me a second. Okay, I noticed that the air pressure kind of dropped. I think that I didn't have the system pressurized when I set that pressure. So hopefully now this will work. Oh, I also disconnected the port B on this because once I connect the solenoid, I'm expecting air to come out of that port B. Um, let's just see what happens when I do this. Yeah. There we go. I think this is gonna work now. So I can connect the cylinder back up to port B. And now, yeah, my pressure's good. Now this should work. Whoa! Whoa! That is awesome. I don't know about you, but that looks like a punching robot arm if you ask me. Oh my gosh, that is violent, holy cow. And I have it at a low pressure. Imagine what would happen if I raise it up. Let's do that. Okay, so now it's at 50 PSI. This is probably gonna break something, ready? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yeah, this is kind of sliding all over the place. That is gonna be awesome. 
Things are definitely shifting around here. All right, well, I'm gonna stop playing with it before I break it. I'm already working on part two of this project. I built a second arm and I already printed out the giant fists that go on the end of the arms. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.